Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Wellness Minute. I'm your host, Dr. Rebecca Pilly. December is Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Month. Today we have two special guests who will talk to us about these diseases, which together affect more than half a million people in the United States. First, let's welcome Dr. Amina Keats, a local naturopathic doctor who practices at the Natural Care Center. How are you today, Amina? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. So we're going to be talking about Crohn's and colitis. And even though I mentioned it affects over half a million people, not everyone has heard of these diseases. Dr. Keats, could you explain what Crohn's and colitis are and how they can affect people? Sure. So Crohn's disease and colitis or ulcerative colitis are categorized as inflammatory bowel disease. And each of these diseases causes inflammation to the gastrointestinal tract. And they actually present with very similar symptoms. The main symptoms being diarrhea. Uh, some patients or some people can experience rectal bleeding, loss of appetite. Uh, depending on the severity of the condition, some people may experience fever. And each of these conditions can have an emotional impact. So depression or anxiety may occur as well. Oh, OK. So I think uh, a lot of us have heard about IBD. Mm -hmm. So now we know a little bit more about that in yes. relation to Crohn's and colitis. And could you ex just explain a little bit more about how the two are differentiated? Sure. So as I mentioned, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, they basically have an identical kind of presentation. So the only way to really differentiate between them is the, the location of the inflammation. So with Crohn's disease, it can impact the entire gastrointestinal system. So from the mouth all the way down to the anus. With ulcerative colitis, it's the, the, the colon that's impacted. So that would be the large intestine and the rectum specifically. Okay. So uh, location is really key. Exactly. To, that is, to that is correct. Distinguish. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. So as a naturopathic doctor, how would you diagnose this, these diseases? So if I saw a patient who presented with th this set of symptoms along with maybe some past medical history that was questionable and even some family history that may be questionable, I would refer them to see a gastroenterologist who specializes in gastrointestinal diseases. And from there, I would continue to work with that patient in terms of reducing symptoms and uh, supporting remission of uh, the Crohn's disease and or the ulcerative colitis. Okay, so working in concert with um, more of a conventional physician, what are some of the ways that you would work with the patient? So inflammation is, is key when it comes to both of these conditions. And so anti-inflammatory kind of supplementation is going to be very important. And so the, the two that I rely on the most would be omega-3 fatty acids and curcumin. They each help to reduce or inhibit, inhibit um, inflammatory chemicals. Vitamin D3 is something else that I think about because low rates of vitamin D have been associated with increased rates of mm. each of these diseases. When it comes to symptom management, some things that I think about are uh, peppermint oil in capsule form, which helps to reduce abdominal pain, which is a very common side effect in each of these conditions. Ginger is also an antispasmodic and can also help to reduce pain. I mentioned the emotional impact. <clears throat> so if depression is of, of concern, something that's simple and safe to use with most antidepressant medications would be a B-complex vitamin, mm. uh, where vitamin B6 can be especially helpful in, in reducing depressive kind of um, feelings. Uh, when it comes to anxiety, things like magnesium glycinate can help to reduce anxiety. Mm. Um, so those are the, the primary things that I think about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, you've described some ways to treat it. And then how, how might you do uh, integrate with um, the physician that the patient's seeing? So I, I'm a big believer in using all the tools that are available uh, to, to help to support remission and help to reduce relapse with uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And so I uh, would work with patients who were receiving conventional medicine, whether it be uh, a steroid or antibiotic or whatever that medicine might be, and also incorporating the natural therapy safely to help to support that patient. 
Okay, wonderful. Well, oftentimes we talk about eating from the garden and how nutrition can help in the suppression and maintenance of different conditions. Is there any type of special diet that a patient could follow? Sure, so there are quite a few diets out there, uh, but the one that I like to use is the specific carbohydrate diet. This was a diet that was put together in the early 1900s, initially for people with celiac disease and other gastrointestinal conditions. But uh, more recently, research has shown that it helps to support remission in each of the, the disease, diseases, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, and it also helps to reduce the symptoms. And so with the specific carbohydrate diet, what you're basically doing is you're removing complex carbohydrates like grains and starchy vegetables and certain beans, and you're incorporating more of the simple carbohydrates like ripe fruit and um, non-starchy vegetables. Okay, all right. So um, are there any other types of therapies that might be available to the patient in supporting their health? Sure, so stress management is huge. Stress has an impact on so many different things, and so that's a piece of the whole integrative puzzle when it comes to both of these conditions. And so the things that I recommend for stress management would include meditation, deep breathing, acupuncture, as well as yoga therapy. Okay, so we're really thinking about the whole person in the process of, of healing or managing. Absolutely, okay. yeah, again, using all the tools that are available. Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful. Dr. Keats, thank you again for coming in today to talk to us about Crohn's and colitis. As the leading academic institution of integrative health in the nation, Maryland University of Integrative Health puts great emphasis on education and research to create leaders in a quickly developing field. Since 1974, we've been combining ancient wisdom traditions with cutting edge science to inform our programs and expand into new areas of study. Our educational models are progressive in many ways. One of the most important is that we're looking at cutting edge research to try to figure out what is the best way to approach a situation, whether it's treating a client's individual problems, whether it's managing integrative care as a philosophy, whether it's figuring out how to deliver herbal mixtures so that people have access to them, whether it's solving healthcare disparities or advocating for the work that we do in the profession. That's an integral part of everything that we do. Throughout students' experiences here, we're able to provide hands-on learning and clinical opportunities to give them the edge they need to become strong members in the integrative health community, not only once they graduate, but while they're here too. At MUIH, we strongly value clinical hands-on experience. There's nothing that can separate you uh, more from the pack than if you can say, I've done it before. I've tried it out, I've had my faculty help me work on something, I've worked with actual clients, I have that hands-on experience that tells me that I don't just understand something in theory, but I live it in my reality. That's why it's part of all of our programs to get either clinical or some kind of practical experience in whatever it is that you're doing. We also believe in community and the power it has to mold a student's education. That's why each student is given a unique experience whether it's through mentorship within the programs or through their experience with the admissions team. We value community and make sure that each student has a personalized experience. Students' experiences are customized before they even get here. You're assigned one individual counselor who works with you throughout the process to understand what's going on in your life, what's motivating you to come into our programs, what questions do you have about those programs, are there any accommodations that need to be made, can you do it in your own way, in your own pace, and in what sense can you not, and do you have to conform to what else is going on in the system. Same kind of individualization continues in the classroom experience as well, and then also when students are in the care center working with clients, or whether they're in the field working in a corporate setting or in a business setting. Not only do we support students while they are here, but even after they graduate, they know that they are welcome here and have a community that wishes to see them succeed and bring health and wellness to the world. Our commitment to our students doesn't just end when they graduate. We want to support our students throughout their career, which includes helping them to innovate and to become entrepreneurs on their own. 
So we strongly encourage and support our students who want to build their own clinical practices, who want to venture into new areas, who want to grow exotic herbs or keep bees or do all sorts of things to make the world a, a healthier, safer, and better place. If you're ready to begin the journey of health and wellness and become an integral part of the integrative health community, MUIH is the place for you. Visit us today. Welcome back to the Wellness Minute. Our next guest, Marlisa Sullivan, is a physical therapist, yoga therapist, and assistant professor at the Maryland University of Integrative Health. Marlisa couldn't make it into the studio today, but we were able to catch up with her and learn a little bit about the impact that yoga therapy can have on Crohn's and colitis. Check this out. My name is Marlisa Sullivan, and I am a physical therapist and a yoga therapist. I uh, am an assistant professor here at Maryland University of Integrative Health, where I mostly teach in the yoga therapy program as well as health promotion. So one of the primary ways that yoga can be really effective for Crohn's and colitis and really other kinds of chronic conditions as well is through what they call top-down and bottom-up regulation. And so what this means is that we can use um, top-down techniques um, to help change the orientation of thoughts and beliefs and emotions. So we can use things like the meditation techniques and the yamas and niyamas um, in order to affect the body. So when we do these techniques, we're facilitating a parasympathetic response in the body, we're creating greater ease in the body, we're changing the relationship to painful stimuli. And we can also, what yoga therapy does in addition to more meditative techniques is it integrates bottom up, meaning that we can utilize the body to affect what's happening in the mind and to affect what's happening in our human experience. So by doing things like asana and physical postures that um, create a relaxation response, that um, create more ease in the body, we can help someone access a state of ease or comfort through bodily position that they maybe can't with their mind. So we can use bottom-up techniques of physical postures and of breathing techniques to help decrease allostatic load, to decrease the stress on the system, to facilitate greater uh, relaxation and for that kind of self-management of symptoms. The exercises that we can use in yoga therapy that can help with the symptoms of Crohn's and colitis are those that help to really mobilize and relax and create space for all the abdominal organs. So for example, any kind of active or restorative side bend of the spine, back bend, forward bend, twist especially, um, can be really beneficial. And what's nice about yoga therapy postures is that we can do them active, coordinated with the breath, but we can also do really supportive, restorative stretches that are held for anywhere from two to five or eight minutes where um, the body is able to really relax into deeper and deeper tissues, working from more superficial muscles into deeper layers of fascia. And it's that um, helping with the restrictions of fascia that might really help with um, things like Crohn's and colitis to free the abdominal organs. There are breathing techniques that also help with the symptoms of Crohn's and colitis. And one of the primary primary things that we can do with breath is help to facilitate activation of the parasympathetic nervous system or what people call the relaxation response. And when we facilitate that relaxation response, it creates a relaxation of muscles, of fascia, of connective tissue, um, of the whole system. Um, so things like a longer exhalation where the exhalation is twice as long as the inhale facilitates that relaxation response. Alternate nostril breath where you alternately breathe in and out of each nostril has also been shown to help facilitate the parasympathetic nervous system. And then another way that we can work with um, this through the breath is diaphragmatic breath. So when we help teach the client how to really mobilize the diaphragm as they breathe, they're also helping to create that mobility through all of the abdominal organs to create more freedom, more space, um, and more mobility. So as far as meditation, um, there's a, a couple different ways that meditation can help. One is, again, this activation of the parasympathetic nervous system. So really facilitating this relaxation response, which helps to relax the mind, but also helps to relax all of the tissues of the body to create more space in the abdomen. Um, and another way is meditation helps to build awareness of how our emotions um, and our thoughts are related to our physical pain and physiological state. 
state. So helping people to build that awareness of how their emotions, their thoughts, their beliefs are related to their stressors and are related to their physiological states and their pain. So we um, do practices through meditation that build what's called interoception, which is this awareness of inner body states um, and the way that the thoughts and emotions are related. So we can teach people how to tease apart, to notice their thoughts, to notice their emotions, to notice their reactions to stress um, and to the, their life and help them to um, create greater ease and greater comfort. Um, we can do that through things like imagery. Uh, yoga nidra is a really deep form of relaxation and building of awareness, um, mantra, and, and those kinds of things. The other practice is the yamas and niyamas, which are these ethical principles. So it's things like going through your life and contemplating the, the principle of non-harming. How do I go through my life and make sure that the choices I'm making are not harming myself and not harming those around me? Um, things like truthfulness, um, noticing when we're really true to ourselves and our thoughts and our body, um, how we can relate to the world around us from that space of truth, which can help us to facilitate that relaxation response and that greater ease in our body. So the skills that a yoga therapist can teach someone with Crohn's or colitis that helps them to really manage their illness um, is the capacity for self-care and self-regulation of the system. So we can teach people um, practices that they can do anywhere. So they, we teach them anywhere from postures to breathing techniques to meditation techniques to journaling. Um, and we teach them all of these tools to help them notice what exacerbates their symptoms and what exacerbates their condition, but also when they are in an, a flare-up, how to um, self-manage and self-care. What a great interview. That was Marlisa Sullivan talking to us about the benefits of yoga therapy and its effects on Crohn's and colitis. Tune in next month where we'll kick off our year with the New Year, New You episode. Don't forget to take a look at the upcoming events at MUIH. See you next time.